Have you got lobular breast cancer? Are you struggling to get information about it? Do you want to know if it's treated differently? Is it more likely to come back in the future? And why are there so few trials for it? If that's you, you're not alone. I had lobular breast cancer and I got frustrated at how little information there is. Thankfully things have changed and there are now dedicated support and research groups just for us and I'll put the links in the video notes. Today I'm going to tell you everything there is to know about lobular cancer, what it is, how it's detected and how it's treated. You'll learn the unusual symptoms of lobular recurrence that you need to be wary of and finally I'll share the latest research and what the future holds. Before I start, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about my own lobular cancer journey. Feel free to skip ahead to the next chapter if you already know this. Now, I was diagnosed with stage 3 mixed ductal and lobular cancer back in 2015 when I was 40. It wasn't seen on a mammogram, only on the ultrasound and the MRI. I had chemo first and my final MRI showed that my cancer had disappeared. Yay! Except it hadn't. Only the ductal bit had gone and my mastectomy showed there was still 13 centimetres of lobular cancer left in my breast and that wasn't seen on the MRI. It was ER positive and HER2 negative. Three years later I had a local regional recurrence on my chest wall and seven months ago I had a second local recurrence above my mastectomy scar. Now I should warn you that you will hear me say a lot of breast cancer specific words that may be new to you. These are all words that I've explained before in some of my other videos. I'll highlight the videos as we go along and I'll list them all in the notes so you can go and watch them later. So what is lobular breast cancer? Well, breast cancers develop from cells in the breasts and 80% of breast cancers come from the cells that line the ducts that carry milk through the breast to the nipple. They're called ductal cancer or cancers of no special type. Lobular cancers come from the glandular tissue of the breast that's the pink bit that you can see. That's the bit of the breast that makes the milk if you do get pregnant. And they make up 10 to 15% of all cancers. They're more common in menopausal women. And over 90% of lobular cancers are grade 2, slow growing, ER positive and HER2 negative. And you can find out more about those terms in this video. Lobular cancers also tend to be larger than ductal cancers when they're diagnosed, often over 5 centimetres in size. They're also more likely to be multifocal or multicentric. Now, a multifocal cancer means there's more than one cancer in one area of your breast, like a cluster of cancers all within five centimetres. A multicentric cancer means there are several cancers in different areas of your breast, and this nearly always means you'll need to have a mastectomy to remove them. Lobular cancers are also more likely to be found in both breasts at the same time, called bilateral breast cancer, and this is more common in younger women. There's also another rare type of lobular breast cancer called pleomorphic lobular breast cancer and there's not a lot of information about it. They tend to be grade 3, faster growing and are much more likely to spread to the lymph nodes. But for the rest of this video I'm just going to talk about normal lobular cancer. So why is it so hard to find? See, lobular cancers are sneaky and they grow in a single file like a bedsheet instead of forming a clump. And that's because they don't have a molecule called E-cadherin on their cell surface. E-cadherin is like an anchoring protein. It makes cells sticky. All ductal cancer cells have it and that's why they grow together in clumps that are easy to see on a mammogram or easy for you to feel. But because the lobular cancer spread out in single file, they are much harder to see on a mammogram or for you to notice a lump. Eventually the sheets of cells will merge forming a mass but by the time this happens the cancer has often spread to the lymph nodes. So how are they diagnosed? Well lobular cancers can be hard to find when you check your breasts. I'm a breast surgeon and I didn't know I had a 13 centimetre cancer in my breast and I've got expert hands. I missed it because the lobular cancer had formed a web through the whole of my breast instead of a palpable lump. I only saw the ductal bit that had formed a lump. Lobular cancers are more likely to present with a skin dimpling, a thicker, fuller breast or your nipple being pulled in and that's why it's still important that you check your breasts regularly so you can pick up these signs. We do still use mammograms as the first scan because we don't know what kind of cancer you have until we do a biopsy. Now mammograms do pick up almost two thirds of all lobular cancers. However, a third of all lobular cancers are only seen on one view. Ultrasound scans will find around 90% of all lobular cancers, but they still miss one in 10 of them. Now, magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, is normally done in anyone with a lobular cancer that isn't easily seen on a mammogram. 
MRIs will pick up over 95% of all lobular cancers, but they can still miss some, which is what happened to me. These are called occult cancers, and at the moment there's no other way of screening them. MRI scans are also done because they'll often show that a lobular cancer is bigger than first thought. And it's important to know this because it helps your surgeon plan the right operation. How is lobular cancer treated? Well, the principles of treatment are the same as any other breast cancer. Surgery to remove the cancer with a clear margin of normal tissue, followed by radiotherapy if needed and chemotherapy if needed, followed by hormonal therapy. When it comes to surgery, the outcome from a lumpectomy and a mastectomy are the same, providing all the cancer has been removed. But because lobular cancers tend to be large, more women will end up having a mastectomy compared to those with ductal cancer. What about chemotherapy? So chemotherapy doesn't work very well for most lobular cancers, and that's because they are so slow growing. Now, if you have a very large cancer with involved lymph nodes, you might still be offered chemotherapy, but most of you will be started on hormonal therapy instead, and you may be given targeted therapy like a CDK inhibitor, and you can see this video to find out more. There is hope that molecular tests like Oncotype and Prosignia will be able to help your oncologists work out whether you really need chemotherapy, but at the moment there isn't a lot of information. And that's because most trials don't separate breast cancers by tumour type, ductal and lobular. Endocrine therapy is the main treatment that you have with an ER positive lobular breast cancer. We want to lower the levels of estrogen in your blood to reduce the risk of lobular cancer coming back. Now, there are trials looking at giving it to you before surgery to try and shrink the cancer to help you avoid a mastectomy. There's not much evidence to show whether one drug is better than another, but there is some data hinting that letrozole has a greater effect than tamoxifen. Targeted therapy. So as I said earlier, you may be given one of the CDK inhibitors, palpocyclib, which is what I'm on, abemocyclib or ribocyclib, together with a hormone blocker, and this is to further reduce the risk of recurrence if you have a large tumour. Now, the PLOPS trial has just finished recruiting, and that's looking at the benefit of giving palpocyclib and endocrine therapy before surgery in patients with ductal and lobular cancer. The results are expected in 2031. Does lobular cancer have a worse survival rate? At the moment, there isn't a lot of evidence to say one way or the other, and your survival rate depends on lots of things, and it means how likely you are to still be alive five or 10 years after treatment. Now, we work it out using a computer algorithm on websites such as NHS Predict and Adjuvant Online, and it takes into account your tumour size and grade, are your lymph nodes involved, is your cancer ER or HER2 positive or negative, how old you are, However, it doesn't ask whether your cancer was ductal or lobular, which is really annoying, but that's because the vast majority of trials over the years have looked at how successful breast cancer treatment is by size and grade and receptors. They didn't look at the difference between ductal and lobular cancers, and that's why there isn't a lot of information to help. The few studies that there are have shown that lobular cancers have a better outcome in the first five years compared to ductal cancers with fewer recurrences. But as you get older and you get beyond 10 years from your treatment, it's the lobular cancers that are more likely to come back. Why don't you have an MRI as follow-up after lobular breast cancer? This is so hard to explain, and I used to struggle to get my patients to understand it. And then when I got lobular cancer, I became a confused patient. We do breast scans for the first five years after surgery for two reasons. One is to look for a recurrence in the breast, assuming you had a lumpectomy, because if you've had a mastectomy, then there's no tissue left to scan. The other is to look for a breast cancer in your healthy breast. Having breast cancer once means you are more likely to have it again compared to a healthy woman. But you need to remember things like chemotherapy and tamoxifen and letrozole reduce the risk of that happening. There is also no guarantee that if you had a lobular cancer, a new cancer in your breast would be lobular as well. It's just as easily to be a ductal cancer, which is seen on a mammogram. So we start with a mammogram as they are useful in picking up changes. And if your cancer wasn't seen on a mammogram in the beginning, your team may consider doing MRIs as well. At the moment, there's no national policy for lobular follow-up, but if you are worried, you've got dense breasts, your cancer was missed, talk to your team and ask them about regular MRI follow-up. Now what happens when lobular cancer comes back as stage four disease? Now this might be scary to hear, but it's really important to know. Because it can come back 10 or even 20 years in the future, you need to know what to look out for. And yet again, lobular can be sneaky. 
although it does go to the common sites such as your liver and bones. It can also spread to your abdominal cavity. And the cells invading the linings of your gastrointestinal and gynaecological organs can be affected, such as your stomach, your ovaries, your bowel and your bladder. And because the cells grow in sheets, they can wrap around the organs like a loose knot that slowly tightens. And this means that you may have different symptoms of metastatic disease, such as indigestion and heartburn, constipation or difficulty having a wee. If you do have an unusual symptom and you've had it for more than three or four weeks and you can't explain it, make sure you see your family doctor. Now, they might not remember that lobular cancer can spread to different sites, so you might need to remind them. A lobular metastasis is hard to detect. You guessed it, lobular cancer is the gift that keeps on giving. Not only is the primary cancer hard to spot, but the metastases are as well. And again, that's because they grow in sheets and not a lump. Now in 2022, a survey at a big breast cancer conference in the States asked 271 women with lobular mets how they were diagnosed. 48% said it was unexpected or an incidental finding during another medical procedure or scan. A third said that at least one type of imaging, such as ultrasound or a CT, failed to pick up one of their metastatic sites. We desperately need more research to help identify metastatic disease, and liquid biopsies might be just around the corner. So what does the future look like for lobular cancer? Well, there are several really exciting areas of research at the moment, and the first is immunotherapy. Lobular breast cancers appear to be immunologically hot, meaning that your immune system is more likely to recognise a lobular cancer. We know there are also more active immune cells compared to ductal cancers, and the GELATO trial was the first immunotherapy study for patients with lobular cancer. It looked at using a drug called Texcentric, which is a PD-L1 inhibitor, together with a chemotherapy drug called carboplatin for patients with metastatic disease. Now, sadly, it was stopped early because it didn't show a benefit and the side effects weren't great, but other trials will follow. We also know that lobular cancers can have different genetic mutations compared to ductal cancers. For example, scientists have discovered that 60% of lobular cancers have a mutation in the PIK3CA gene, which is what I have, and we think this causes endocrine resistance, meaning that drugs like tamoxifen stop working. The SOLAR-1 Phase 3 trial tested a PI3K inhibitor called alpelisib in patients with metastatic lobular disease, and it showed that it increased the length of time that patients had stable disease for. We also know that lobular cancers have a mutation in the CDH1 gene, and it's this mutation that stops the cells producing E. cadherin. The ROLO trial is testing a drug called crizotinib. Now, this targets a protein that lobular cancer cells rely on instead of ecoterin, and we're hoping that this will give us more information about how to treat lobular cancer in the future. If you found this video useful, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss my next one. I'm Dr. Liz O'Riordan, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.